Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we're up on the Wisconsin-Michigan border and we are doing some bass fishing. We're up on a smaller lake. This isn't one of those giant reservoirs. We're gonna try and break down a small body of water today and dial it in to help you guys understand these smaller fisheries. This one should have big predators in it. It should have musky and pike. There should be walleye and there should be bass. We're gonna go out there and try and figure out the bass in a lake where they're not the largest predator. Come along. All right, we're idling out. I'm looking at my Solix, I've got 56 degree water. So in my mind, these fish are probably going to be pre-spawned. We've got beautiful conditions today. It's going to be almost 70 degrees up here in the North Country. These fish should be thinking about moving up. They should at least be sneaking up to be sniffing around in the shadows, the shadows, the shallows. I've got mosquitoes all over me. It's definitely springtime here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and find the longest points that taper up into shallow flats. Those natural highways where these fish could be pulling up. Now the fact that these fish aren't the largest predators can complicate it because sometimes they don't want to be out on the big outside structures because they can get eaten out there. So we're going to focus again on those tapering points that come up onto those spawning flats, but we're not going to fish the outsides. We're going to fish the insides up along the shallows where hopefully those fish are popping up to start thinking about spawning and they can feed before they do it. We'll find out. We don't have amazing contour lines on this lake because this is not a large fishery. It's not a place that bass fishermen are normally going. We just picked a lake up here in the North Woods. But what we've got, you see this point coming in, we're gonna go right up onto the shallows where that point meets the bank. That's where we're gonna start our search today. We're gonna head right up here. All right, we're up on top of this first main lake point. As we get up on top, you can see crystal clear water, sand bottom. Sand is not necessarily our friend. Because these fish aren't the top dog around here, they're going to need some sort of cover around. They like that comfort. So we're gonna run this shoreline. We're gonna look around brush, docks. We're looking for rock, lay down logs, anything that these fish can get up against. When you're trying to break down a fishery, you don't necessarily wanna go slow out of the gate. So we're about to put this trolling motor on 100, start running this edge, looking to visibly see fish in this clear water. If you don't have clear water, fish these likely spots. But if you have clear water, just go fast and look. Because as you can see, if they're up there, we're going to know about it. If we can spot one, then we start developing a pattern. We're just looking for that first fish, either to bite or to see with our eyes to tell us we're on the right track. If that doesn't work, we're gonna to jump to the next point and the next point until we find them here. What the heck are we gonna do? So you guys really couldn't see anything there. Pitched up underneath a pontoon boat with a four inch robo worm and had a muskie come out and eat it. Hooked her, it was probably only like a mid 30 incher. Not a real, real big fish, but she had me over a rope and behind a pipe. There was a pipe set in the ground holding that pontoon boat. She had me through all of it and I'm using five pound fluoro. So we really didn't even have a fight on our hands. I just held it tight and she was doing head shakes. And then all I could think to do was to go in there and try and put my rod underwater and get it around the pipe and then we could follow her 
during that process, she shook the robo worm out. Would have been really fun to land a good muskie. My guess is that won't be our only shot since we've only been here on the lake about 15 minutes. So we're still on that first point. One dock back, Cece saw a big smallmouth, like a four and a half, four and three quarter pounder sitting under a dock all by itself. Not a school, just a single fish. And it was really shy. We didn't even make a cast before it took off. We get up here, this isn't a dock, it's just a pontoon boat, but the next overhead cover is a big muskie under it. So we're just gonna keep cruising here move around the lake, try and build on this pattern. There obviously are shallow fish pulled up. We just need to find some better structure, some better cover that's holding more of them. It's That's the fish we just saw, and it's a good one. <clears throat> oh, it's a really good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a great fish. She's only on five pounds. Ready? Mm -hmm. Yes! <laughs> wow. How's that for the first fish on a new lake? That fish ate a little four inch robo worm sculpin. What a small mouth. These small bodies of water up in the North Country are full of gorgeous fish. There's not a ton of pressure because there are so many lakes. That's awesome. Oh, that right away. Got you. That's not the big one. Come on, right there. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. There was a bigger one with it. Wow. There's an even bigger one out there. That's amazing. Let me spot lock here. Ah! Oh, I can that's see her. She's huge. still there. Oh, that fish is huge. Wow. <sighs> what an awesome smallmouth. Another monster. How fun, just coming out here blind and dialing in these huge fish. Look at that. Wow. Stay right down here, okay? Stay right there. Got a baby go. muskie. Let's go. Look what daddy has. Let's go. Let's go. The one we had this morning was a whole lot bigger. Look at him. Look at him. You want to touch him? Yeah, he's floppy. He is a little floppy. It's a little baby muskie.
Watch out, babe. Thanks. Came out from under that dock and ate this tube. So normally it's really easy to target these fish. We've talked about pre-spawn, how these fish are moving towards spawning areas. And in large reservoirs, it's really, really simple to predict. But in these smaller bodies of water, and that's why we wanted to come to a smaller body of water today, it's honestly, it's equally predictable, but you have to know what to expect because there are not these rows of secondary points like we talk about. You have a much smaller confined space. So in this lake, we essentially have a bowl out in the middle, just a hollow, shallow bowl, and then it tapers up on the edges. Where it tapers up, you've got a handful of points and humps, and then we've got these big, shallow spawning bays. That's all that we've got. So the fish are gonna follow those points up onto those bays, just like they would following a row of secondary points back into a spawning area. But here, the next piece of cover is not going to be these great big expanses of cover and places to feed. So what these fish are gonna do is they're gonna pull up to any single piece of cover. We caught them today off of logs. We've caught them off of now docks. As the sun gets higher, they really shift their attention to the pieces of cover that provide a lot of shade, like a small dock. Um, up underneath boats, any small piece of cover, that's what our fish have come off of. And as the sun gets higher, they're gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper into those shadows. You're gonna see them less out on like a rock pile or a stick and more up underneath a dock or a boat or something like that. And then ultimately they're going to spawn in these same areas, then reverse, head back out those points, back out to the outer edges. Let's keep fishing. All right. I can see one behind the trees up on the bank. I quick tied on a fluke, just threw it onto the shore. I'm gonna pop it in and see if I can get this fish. He smashed it! <laughs> nice fish. Yeah, it is. <laughs> wow, look at that fish. <laughs> Matt always worries about hooking them first, landing them next. <laughs> that one was in. That fish was those behind trees. the trees. <laughs> six pound leader, little Kitech, six foot eight, medium light spinning rod. Is a northern largemouth right there. <laughs> wow. I tied on a fluke because we'd seen some little baby musky up here in the trees. I see a fish in there, fire in. It's no musky.
Awesome fish. She's been bit by something. Yes. Beautiful smallmouth. I think that's a good one to wrap it up on. So you guys, to, to recap the day, essentially we came to a smaller lake hoping to, to target fish and break down a small body of water where it doesn't quite fit the bill with what we've been teaching lately. The concepts are the exact same, but you have to focus on a little bit different structures to make it work. And it works. These beautiful fish are pulling up on these tapering points up into the shallows because they're headed to the spawn. And then they get up on every little piece of cover, little floating dock, laid down tree. That first really big one came off a log on the bottom. They're very, very predictable. You're not running a pattern on secondaries. You're not running way up creek arms to get the fish in the back, but you're still running a pattern on a small scale and it works over and over again. We got to catch a bunch of awesome fish today. Okay. Hope you guys enjoyed coming along. The three baits that we got them on, got them on a tube, and we'll link you the exact baits down in the video description, but we got them on a tube. We got them on that sculpin on a little modified, uh, a modified, uh, geez, I'm drawing a blank on my own, my own setup. Darter head. Oh, darter head. Um, I don't actually have a darter head out here with us, so I kind of, modified another head into one to get the action I wanted. The robo and then, worm, right? Yeah, that was the robo. And then throwing a 3.3 a Kitech on a little screw head was the third one. And we had a blast. We hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.